If you want a no-nonsense hardcore 4x4, say you're a farmer, but you want it to be electric, what do you do? Because there isn't really one on sale. Land Rover don't build one. Rivian have got something coming in the truck world and Tesla have, but there isn't really anything out there until now. Until now, because you have this, something that was born in the Soviet era of Russia, but it's been refined in the Czech Republic and you can now buy it right-hand drive and fully electric. It is, of course, the MWM Spartan EV. I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. Okay, so what actually is the Spartan? Well, it was built in Soviet era Russia from 1971, and it used to be called the UAS 469, catchy. And it's still available as a civilian vehicle called the Hunter. But what these guys do, what MWM do, is they, they order them from UAS and they get shipped to the Czech Republic, and that's where it can be converted to EV. As a, from a rolling shell, or you could just buy it as a piston car. You can only buy it as a five door, five seat version at the moment. There will be a commercial ver vehicle version coming, they say. But if you wanna know what it's like in terms of size, because I'm always keen to know how big these things are, and I, I did a, a few little notes. So it's, it's 4,050 mil long, which means a Lada Neva is 310 mil shorter, a Defender 90, the new Defender 90, is 533 mil longer, and the Jimny is 405 mil shorter. Okay? Right. Ground clearance, 210 millimeters, and we've cocked it up on here so you can see, look, straight axles, coil springs on the front, old school leaves on the rear, and those leaves have been uprated because of the weight of the, the batteries, most of which live in the back. It will wade to half a metre, which is convenient, as I have history with ticks over quarry, if you've watched my Lada Neva video. Johnny, Johnny, you've gone to the defence. You've gone the wrong way, mate. All that, you've gone the wrong way. Johnny, you've gone the wrong way with the defence. I'll just leave that there. Unlike the Neva, which is a monocoque construction, and of course the, the new Defender is, um, this is separate body and chassis. So it's a steel ladder frame chassis. You can actually see it when you go into the inner wings and stuff like that. Um, and it's, uh, it comes zinc primed and gloss black two coated, but you can order it with full um, corrosion protection if you want, or I guess you could just do it yourself. Entirely up to you. Remember, this was built for the military the Russian military originally, so it's, it's simple and it's hard to kill. I love the fact that I'm reviewing a brand new car with sliding windows, not even wind down windows, let alone electric, sliding windows and then, and then CCS rapid chargeability. How's that for contrast? Ultra low tech, ultra high tech. While I've got this door down, and there's an identical door on the other side, because it, it, in petrol form it has two fuel tanks, um, this car will rapid charge up to 63 kilowatts. Okay, so according to my notes, because this is 63 kilowatt hour battery pack, zero to 80% in 60 minutes, uh, at a seven kilowatt charger that I have at home, you know, the wall box, it'll do it in about 10 hours. All right, the final version will have a 6.6 .6 onboard charging system. Yeah, so there it is. Now, the shape is old school, unashamedly. I kind of liken it to a, an Aldi G-Wagon. You think the cheapest G-Wagon, especially from the back, the cheapest G-Wagon is nearly 100,000 pounds. If you were gonna buy a hardcore off-road electric vehicle now, you'd have to order something like a conversion of an old Defender from electric classic cars. And I have driven one of those. Bear in mind they're about 85,000 pounds for the conversion without buying a Defender. So you'd have to factor in the price of a Defender on top of that, a second-hand Defender. Right, Rosh, you're the man in charge of this project, as it were, aren't you? Um, 
Let's first start. Who's, who's MWM? Who are they? Who are you? <laughs> so MWM stands for Morris Ward Motors. We're okay. part of the Morris Ward Group, uh, which is a freight forwarding company. Freight? Yes. Right, okay. And uh, the owner, Morris Ward, um, is an entrepreneur and uh, decided he wanted to make electric cars. So, which is where the uh, two-seater uh, electric uh, in-wheel motor Luca EV This little coupe started. thing that you're working on. Yes. I'll put a picture on screen because it's very cool. Um, so you've got that and that's, that's all new, not based on anything in existence. That's right, yes. That's an original design. There yeah. is a uh, similar, similarity to a lot of different uh, classic cars to that. Yeah. And then you've got this. And this is obviously, like I said, it's... It's, it's ex-Soviet era military and, and very much looks like it. Um, but you guys, are, and it's still made in Russia? Yes, so our, we've partnered with the Russian manufacturer, yeah. UAZ. They've been producing vehicles for the best part of 80 years. Yeah. And variants of this, uh, the current variant is called the US Hunter. We've oh. used that as our base vehicle. Then what we've gone ahead and done is uh, electrified it and um, made it available right-hand drive and brought it to the UK market. So MW Motors are responsible for the EV version of this being available here, right-hand drive. So it's, so it's manufactured in Russia and then it's what's well, half manufactured in Russia and then it goes to the Czech Republic where you guys fit the EV drivetrain. So it kind of got, it gets delivered as a rolling body Yes, Chassis. essentially. We call them gliders, okay. so it comes with no uh, components uh, from a combustion point of view. Yeah. Um, and we go ahead and uh, bolt on everything to do with the EV uh, side of the vehicle. Okay. Um, and also everything is designed in-house in terms of the battery management system, the diagnostics, uh, what you see on the dash control. The dash. It's got technology on the dash. <laughs> yes. So it's a bit of, uh, bit of the old with some of the new. Because this is the electric version of the Spartan, that's why this sort of Jeep style, very simple grill is blanked off because it doesn't actually need to cool anything. The electric motor, the AC motor under here is liquid, liquid cooled. Oh, look at this. Now where's me rod? So if you're watching this, and you're thinking, oh, it, this might not be quite as luxurious as my Range Rover Velar or my Audi Q5. You're not the customer for the Spartan EV or not. You're simply not the customer. This is a car that's simple in the first place and it has had electric technology put into it, but this is a car that's built to work. This doesn't have a radio. It sure as hell doesn't have electric windows or air conditioning. This is a car that's going to work hard for a living and that's why specifically MWM are, are really targeting an agricultural audience. Under the bonnet of the Spartan, Spartan, love the name, derived from Hunter. Brilliant. You're first of all greeted with a full-size spare wheel and tyre. Now remember, yes, you can, you can buy this with the original um, four-cylinder 2.7 16-valve engine, which is about 134 horsepower. This is a 120 kilowatt um, motor, AC, water-cooled, and it lives down in there. You can see down there, though, where the sort of new tech meets the old. You've got the steering box there, which is assisted by electric power steering. It has got ABS. It's still got the 12 volt system, of course, which you need for all of the usual stuff like headlights. But it's beautifully, in the same way that there's the charm about the larder, it's so brutally honest. I can change that headlight bulb, I don't know, in probably about a minute. And that's refreshing in 2021. This thing has got 600 newton meters of torque. It's an enormous amount of torque. Top speed limited to 80 miles an hour. So this is never gonna be a fast car, but it's good for towing up to two and a half tons, which is really important. Especially the sort of people that are gonna be buying this will, will be people that work in conservation or agriculture. Um, in the sort of areas actually, increasingly, where you might want to um, respect the environment and respect the animals that you're working with. That's when EV makes sense. And remember, EV develops full torque at zero RPM. So around here, theoretically, it should be perfect. Now first, I mean, it's been raining a lot and it's, uh, it's, it's very wet. It's the total opposite of when I came 
with the Lada Neva that time, which uh, kind of ended a bit, it ended wet, but it wasn't supposed to end that wet. So I have history with this quarry with cars of Russian descent. <sighs> Perfectly innocent mistake, mine, not the Neva. Look, you can walk on that. And then it just drops off like, like going into a swimming pool. And I thought this was the shallow bit to get out of the wading area. And I didn't want to take it, I didn't want to take any chances. So yeah, you can hear the electric power steering rigged up to a steering box. But there is something really pleasant about off-roading in an electric car because you don't, you don't need to rev it. You don't need to like spool up a turbo and you can kind of concentrate a bit better. This looks very deep. I shouldn't be nervous. The Spartan's got my back. Spartan, not Hunter. Yes, conquered. The lake has been conquered. So this permanent mag magnet synchronous motor, so they've obviously chosen a motor which is going to be good for good for towing, good for torque. It's not a sports car and it's never going to be and you kind of know that because you're not fools. I could have it in four wheel drive high at this point but that is a very big steep drop and I don't know if I'm going to belly out that's a that's a bramble I've got regen braking so I'm gonna this is like a very steep drop I think I'm going to cock a wheel here you hear all the safety systems oh that was there you go that was easy but you can kind of concentrate because it's quiet I'm going to traverse <laughs> you can just creep up anything. We have got um, aftermarket tyres on it, which were put on the car because of a, a demonstration for another client. And the spare wheel is under the front on the EV, whereas on the piston one, it sits on the back door, which is why you've got that recess on the back door. That looks pretty serious down there. Immediately, one thing that I find a bit odd is that the pedals are so far offset to the steering wheel, it's a, I mean, it's ridiculous. The throttle is almost in the corner of the door. What's lovely about old design vehicles are old shaped vehicles, thin pillars, flat windscreen, excellent visibility. You know where the end is. I mean, you sit really high, dash is just a piece of, it's just painted steel pressing ribbed bonnet and you can see the end of it you can just clearly see the end of this car so as i go down the hill there might be a bit of blue on here and that blue graph signifies regen braking up to 60 kilowatts of regen actually which is healthy so the spartans range is 125 miles you'll probably get more of that if you're just doing slow off-roading and no towing but Equally, if you take it on the open road, it won't be as efficient. There's a big rock here. I'm going to go over it slow. There's a battery box under there and it's fully armoured so it can do stuff like this. Because this is based on an old design, the front bumper is structural. I mean, it feels like a girder. There's towing hooks attached to it because that 
are the ends of the they're the ends of the chassis. So it's it's very very simple. Plastic corners, which I suspect to be cheap if you were to damage the corners. Remember, this is a car which you should be able to easily maintain yourself. I mean, the EV drivetrain is significantly less um, moving parts than a normal engine, so therefore, ignoring that, all the other bits are just like a brand new old car. Come around to the side. You might, somewhere around here, see an indicator. Just somewhere around there. <laughs> really simple, no, no electric mirrors. Like I said before, sliding glass. Come round here, come round here. I actually, there's some really quite nice shapes here. The back definitely reminds me of an old G-Wagon. Remember the G-Wagon was developed for military use as well, and that came out in the late 70s. Um, that's plastic cladding over pretty much a piece of girder from the back bumper. There's loads, there's loads of space in the rear of the Spartan. So yeah, this is five seats as standard with seat belts. Uh, no carpets, we'll go into the interior in more detail in a bit. So a nice square space. That's the battery box underneath there, or one of, one of the battery cases. The other one is, um, or the other two are underneath the car where the, where the fuel tanks used to live. You have got a rear wiper. You have got a third brake light. Um, a second reversing light is optional. It's on the options list, I noticed, actually. And metallic paint is an option, although I don't know if this is the kind of car which needs metallic paint. This is no nonsense. So you open the doors, right? And of course, it's, they're, they're, they're this sort of triangular shape. And they're so thin because old cars were like this. But this, this sort of stitched material, it's like the smock of a peasant, but it's really cool because you, you lift it up, it's Velcroed on, and there is like the mother of all door pockets in every door. How many thermos flasks could you lose down there? It's massive. It's absolutely massive. So again, super simple. Just a piece of rubber on a ledge for your elbow and as a door handle, and then just a very, very simple piece of fabric with the mother of door bins. That's it. Central locking. I'm pretty sure, is there any central locking? No, there's no central locking. Oh, and no carpets. Carpets are for pussies. It's just rubber mats. You can hose it out, most definitely. I'm now gonna show you the Spartans air conditioning system. Yeah, Land Rover owners, old Land Rover owners, you can relate. That is your fresh air system. We'll come on to the heating later because it's furious. Well, we have to talk about price, Rosh. Price for the piston one, first of all, for the petrol one. I know it's significantly cheaper, as you'd expect. What well, I'm thinking it's something like 16,500 pounds plus VAT. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. 16,583 plus the VAT. Okay, so that's the 2.7 petrol. And then this one, the electric one. It's 35,395 plus the VAT. Okay, yeah. Um, What's the lead time on something like this? At the moment, we're quoting up to six months. Okay. Um, and that includes a uh, vehicle here in the UK, go through the IVA uh, approval scheme um, and ready for delivery. Okay, wow, brilliant. So they're, because they're built to order, right? Yeah. It's right-hand yes. drive. Yes. Okay. Let's go around to the boot. I wanna just have a quick look at the boot. Okay. Right, so I wanna just talk to you about the, the, the batteries. So the batteries live in different locations on the Spartan, is that right? That's right. Is this, this is the main battery box? So this is the main battery casing. So where the old vehicle used to have fuel tanks on either side. Yeah, twin, uh, twin tanks. Twin tanks, yeah. Twin tanks. Uh, 35 litres on each side. Okay, so 35 and 35, yep. okay, 70. So yep. that, and that's what the, the, the 2.7 has still. Yes. Which is why you've got these identical fillers. In on both sides, doors. yes, right, okay. that's right. So yeah. as I mentioned, this has been converted, yeah. uh, whereas the final vehicles won't be a conversion, they'll be straight out EVs. So this is a mule? Yes. This is a test mule, okay. Yes. Uh, so the main battery case is here, and then you've got two additional battery cases uh, where the old fuel tanks used to be. Okay. And that makes up the full 63 kilowatt. Oh, I saw that underneath. So yes. there's like a welded like metal case. Yeah. Yeah. Right.
Right, we're rolling. We're going to go out on the road now. I want to just feel what the Spartan is like as a road car. First time I've used the indicators. Tend not to need them when you're off-roading. So what is the Spartan like on the road as a road car? Well, I fully expect because it's a separate body chassis car, it's going to feel kind of fairly soft and lollopy, just like a Jimny or, you know, a Mitsubishi Shogun, all those kinds of things, or old school Defender. I really like the driving position. Obviously, the seats are so bare, there's not a great deal of adjustment, but actually it's okay. Dash is low, bonnet, you sit way above the bonnet. So if you like a commanding driving position, fill your boots. You've got the, the, you know, the traditional gearbox. So all you do is you stick it in fifth for, is what's been recommended to me by Rosh. Stick it in fifth for road driving. And I've got it in two wheel drive high. I was driving it in four wheel drive when we were off-roading or and four wheel drive low, but 125 kilowatt electric motor. Um, and I know this has got all terrain tires. So efficiency wise and the, and the shape of it, efficiency wise as an EV, I'm not expecting great things, understandably. I forgot how close the steering wheel was to the windscreen. I went to just wave a car through and bang my, my fist on the glass. It's so interesting to have a car launch in, in this day and age, which has such a mad combination of old tech with new tech. But that's what I really like about the Spartan. And that's why I wanted to feature it on the Late Break Show, because I think, although this is a niche vehicle, there's a place for it. And I think it can really work for a certain type of tradesperson, a certain type of um, industry, down a mine, farming, you know, wildlife conservation. These are all disciplines where this could work. And of course, if you don't like the idea of the EV or you think it's too much money or whatever, just buy the piston one. I'm feeling like it's, it, it, you know, it wanders around in that way that I'd expect it to with its separate chassis and its high ground clearance, leaf spring back end. It's actually really comfortable. It does feel like a combination of old Defender and Lada Neva which is kind of what it is. The Lada feels like a more modern car because I think the Lada is a more modern car in terms of the way it's designed and um, its monocoque and independent suspension. But you can't buy a Lada in right-hand drive. And you can't buy an electric one either. Exposed hinges for the windscreen because if you order this as a soft top, which you can, you know, as a military version, you can fold the windscreen down. Do you know what? My expectations for this have not been high. Um, as a comfortable kind of refined car. It's actually not as unrefined as I was expecting so far. So you're never gonna get more than 125 miles out of it on one charge, but you can rapid charge it. And that's what's called, cool. it does have the CCS. Now what we're doing now, speed wise, yeah, 40. So I'm guessing as soon as you get over 40 miles an hour, you can hear the gearbox. I can actually hear it resonating through the stick. If you drive a lot on fast roads, A roads, motorways, I suspect this is really not gonna be the kind of car for you. Now there are squeaks from seat belts and door apertures, cause it's, there's not a great deal of soundproofing. If this had an engine, I suspect it would be much louder and more annoying but i quite like the way it just kind of you just squeeze the throttle and glide a bit you've got your air conditioning here on this lever which opens up that flap on the scuttle got your industrial heating system now if i press that button there i would lock the diffs which you need to do when it's uh, stationary and i didn't need to lock the diffs when i was off-roading i love it i have to say i mean it's rough in places some of the steel pressings and it's obviously so bare it's spartan it's a spartan and it is also spartan it does live up to its name you know if you want carpets or 
electric windows or air conditioning or a radio. You don't get those things. And I don't like the fact that the pedals are so offset to the right. Um, they seem unnecessarily offset, but that's, you know, that's one of the few gripes I have actually. This is a really difficult car to give a verdict on because it's brand new, fully electric, old school looking 4x4. And there's not a lot else out there which does that. In fact, I can't think of one. The closest competitor is to buy a second hand off-roader and have it retrofitted as an EV. But that's more money than this. We live in a world now where Mercedes are going to be electrifying the G-Wagon and selling it, and I'm sure Land Rover will be, and I'm sure many other, the, the Rivians of the world and the Tesla Cybertrucks of the world are coming out. It's happening. Ford are electrifying the F-150 pickup truck. So it's all on the horizon. I think compared to those cars, this seems to be fairly good value, but if you don't value the fact that it's pleasantly old school and charming, then you will never go anywhere near the MWM Spartan. It's a better car than I was expecting. In fact, I think bar a Dakar truck, it's the best off-roader I've ever driven. Hope you've enjoyed this new car review on the Late Break Show. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. These new car reviews are supported by Continental Tires. And I want to also say a massive thank you to my Patreons. There's a link in the description below for my Patreons. Cheers.